uh, also was the name the finalist for Defensive Player of the Year. He found out today at practice and said it was disrespectful, honestly, because uh, he's off social media, so he didn't know. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on Bam, his game, like having a game like he did last night and the whole uh, Defensive Player of the Year conversation. Well, by last night, he didn't have to force or do anything because the game didn't need it. You know, you go with the flow of the game, and mature players understand that. If you if your guys got it going, the three-point shot is going, you're up by 20, 25, you don't need to force anything. And so he was mature enough to understand that. Um, the defensive player of the year, you know, I mean, obviously he's one of the best defenders in the league. Um, he shouldn't let that bother him too much. Um you know, you never you never know what the people are looking for, you know, when they're making those judgments, the media. So I, I think that he could continue to play. He has many years, you know, to be able to prove that he's a defensive player of the year candidate. And I think he can use it as motivation to dominate in this playoff. You know, if you want to show, you know, now is the time to show. But I think Norris, one day Nor he would Nor that. Norris, is it strange for you? Though? I just want to cut in there because is it strange for you? You were on a team that was so high profile down here that they literally ESPN literally assigned four beat writers to cover the team every day. And I know it's LeBron. I get it. I understand it. You know, that's what started all of it. But, but how did we go from that to the heat never getting talked about on national television, never getting national TV games, because I do think that plays into some of this award stuff. I mean, if, if Stephen a is on talking, I mean, literally the first 35 minutes of first take today, we're about the Nets and Celtics. The first 35 minutes, the only time that he mentioned Miami and he runs their NBA coverage now was he kept shouting yeah. South Beach into the mic when the arena isn't even on South Beach. OK, like <laughs> literally like I mean, I think that's 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 literally all the research that they've done and they don't even know the geography like. I mean, what what happened here? Is this just not a sexy team to cover like you guys were? Because I feel like that plays into the fact that Bam should be top three in defensive player of the year. I don't feel like people outside of Miami know what the hell he does on defense because it's that kind of stuff is never featured in the national coverage. Well, you know, it's the stars league. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the star power is going to get the benefit of the doubt most times. And um. I, it's just unfortunate. Sometimes people just don't know what they're watching. I mean, it's a reason why the Heat, you know, we're a top seed this year. It's a reason why every year they're a top five defensive team since Bam has been in the league. It's a reason why, you know, we may not have the quote unquote superstar players, but we're always, you know, relevant. And part of that's because, you know, Bam out of Bayou was here, you know, and so. It takes a real basketball eye to see those things. And a lot of the times the national media, you know, they don't see it, don't pay it attention. And that's just, I mean, that's just human error because he's definitely one of the top defenders in the league, obviously. You know, if you watch basketball, you pay attention, you know, Bam Adebayo is one of the top defenders in the league. So, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they're seeing, but definitely, um, you know, star power plays a part, even though I don't understand because Utah is not a major market either. But somehow, somehow Rudy Gobert, he always, you know, they always talk about him as, as a defensive player of the year candidate, which, you know, uh, you know, he's an elite rim protector, but I don't know about some of those defensive player of the years he had, you know. I mean, he's, he's a talented shot blocker, like I said, but I mean, Bam is definitely a more mobile defender. If when, it, when you talk about shot blocking, rebounding, switching on pick and rolls, you know, being able to guard the perimeter, you know, Bam is one of the most all-around defenders in the league, so he deserves to be in that conversation, no doubt. He doesn't get played off the floor in the fourth quarter like Rudy does. I mean, that's I mean, that's the thing. Like, how are you defensive player of the year if you can be schemed off the floor in the last six minutes of a playoff game? I that's that's that's, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Same thing happened though when uh, when LeBron was up for defensive player of the year and they gave it to Mark Gasol. It was just like like how did that happen? Well, I'm going to vacate that conversation because No, I, I don't Ethan Ethan Because no. because cuz cuz Norris, I got to be honest about this. That's the first time LeBron got really upset at me uh because I I got duped by the analytics folks that year and he knew my vote and I walked into the locker room and all LeBron did was he looked at me and goes how is that possible, Ethan? I don't know how you could even fix your I, I got, right I, 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 I got played. I got played on that one. I, I played in the whole analytics thing that year. 
And uh, yeah, he, he, he wasn't happy with me for a couple of days. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. So I'm with you, but while, while we're <laughs> going to let you run away from that one. I, I'm, I, now that I know that I'm disappointed at you. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, ask another question. Change the subject. Come on, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's why I don't have a vote anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you think LeBron had anything to do with that? No, but seriously, uh, as far as Bam, speaking of everything you're talking about there, him being special, I've always referred to him on this podcast as a cheat code. I really do think, you know, like his, I think his Instagram and Twitter handle say he's one of one because I don't think other guys can do what he does on a night to night basis, possession after possession, just eating up all the actions and everything that's going on and getting teams to literally scheme to try to scheme him out by getting him switched onto a player and then trying to put them in the corner. That's kind of become a thing now. And because they know that Bam will just get in the way. And uh, I think he, he talked at practice today. He said that now this is kind of at the top of his chip on the shoulder list is I think what he called it. So, uh, you know, I think this is going to be good for him right now, specifically in the short term in the playoff run. 